Sounds like a random combination, courgette, hemp hearts and chestnuts. But this is what was in the fritters and they were so delicious. And don't switch off because I've said courgette because you will still enjoy these no matter how much you have a love and hate relationship with them. We're going to start off by making a cup of tea, which has absolutely nothing to do with the recipe, but I needed a cup then. And these are the ingredients you're actually going to need to make these courgette fritters. We use some whole chestnuts, same ones that we use for the beetroot raita. I'll put a link for the video here. Then we had some spelt flour and some chickpea flour that's going to act as an egg replacer and as a binder. And then obviously the banana shallot onions, which I love so much, and the uh, chilies. You can use any type of chilies that you like. Fresh are really the best in this uh, recipe here. Next, you're going to want to get some courgette. That's two. Grate them, not really too fine on a medium kind of setting, and set it aside in a colander so it drains the water and you're going to need the hemp hearts. These are the split ones, that's why they're called hemp hearts. And then you've got some Himalayan salt here, and this is roasted cumin powder, which really gives it a nice taste to the whole dish. Some onions and baking powder to make them rise a bit like pancakes. So they're essentially like um, a pancake or a fritter, it depends on how much oil you're going to use. And you'll see me show you that at the end. What I what you saw me do there was drain out the liquid from the courgette and reserve that liquid, mixing it in here with a chickpea flour. So this is half of that chickpea flour. And I'm just adding that courgette water in here. So we're not wasting anything to just give it that kind of gloopy egg like texture. And then we're going to go in with all of the dry ingredients nearly, well, the spices anyway. So we went in with the salt, the cumin powder and the hemp hearts. And we're going to save the baking powder to the last because we don't want to activate it just yet um, or it'll just go flat before we've even come around to making these. So I just judged how much liquid it needed. So you'll just need to do that because I added all those dry ingredients. It got a bit more stiff, so it needed to add a bit more of that water. Went in next with a courgette and you're gently going to fold it in. Now, I didn't want to keep the whole video of me mixing it. So I've just obviously sped up the video, the magic of editing. And the next thing what you're going to do is basically start adding in some of the other flavorings, I suppose, which are the onions, the garlic. I say onions, but just one onion, the five cloves of garlic and chili. So if your skin is quite sensitive, what I would say is um, wear some gloves or you could put some oil on your hands before you cut chilies so they don't take on as much and you don't end up burning your hands or touching your eyes or anything like that. Um, here I was just being lazy and I didn't want to get a chopping board out. I tried to grate it, it didn't really work that well. Then I just used some scissors. Next I've gone in, you just want them really fine, finely chopped basically. Next, I went in and uh, basically grated in all of the chestnuts. Make sure I'm mixing it really well before I add it into the courgette and the flour mixture, well, with the chickpea flour mixture and the spices. Now give that a little stir, and we're going to add the spelt flour in here and gently fold that in. And as you're mixing it, you will notice that the courgette is going to release some of its liquid, and that's totally fine. We still had chickpea flour to add here. You'll see that I didn't use all of it. I'm just saving a little bit to add later if we need to. And also what I didn't tell you was that I split up the chickpea flour into two halves. One bowl I used to make as a binder that we added the courgette water into and the spices. And the second bowl I'm using as and how we need it to kind of thicken or loosen the mixture. Next, or very last, I went in with a baking powder. Make sure that there's no clumps in there. Gave that a little stir, leaving it to rest for about two minutes while my pan gets really nice and hot. Here I have just used, I think it was rapeseed oil. It's a cold pressed one. Use any oil that you want and you're comfortable using. And you just want to make sure that the pan is nice and hot. You can see here that I've used like, you know, min not minimal, but um, a good amount of oil. And these will be like how when you're making pancakes and you can see it's very forgiving because I basically plopped it onto one another and it's totally fine. And you will know when it's done because one side will get crispy. Then that's when you turn it over. And in between the two, you know, swapping over to the next round, you want to make sure that the pan is clear of any kind of burnt bits. 
this I wanted to make and show you if you want to make it with very minimal oil. So wipe down the pan with a tissue or a cloth and um, there's barely, it's just what was there on the pan before. And this is the result that you get. So you can see that they're still crispy, still have kind of crispy edges to it. These are the proper fritters. So I've used a lot more oil here. It's almost like I'm shallow frying this. And um, I've got to say these tasted so good and um, they were really crispy and really crunchy and browned up a little on the outside and the edges. They were really tasty. So, you know, make it however you like, but I just wanted to give you the option so you can see that you don't have to use a lot of oil if you don't want to. And that's it. And I made these fritters quite small when I use them for the shallow frying technique. So you can see there that they've gone really, really kind of uh, crispy. And that's when you turn it over really and you can see them rising because of the baking powder. So now if you're new here, welcome to the Food Hoodie channel. Seems a bit late to be doing an introduction, but here we are. My name is Chai and if you've been here for some time, you'll know that I love making dishes and their weekly recipes for you and they're easy to make but they deliver in flavor so coming back to the fritters you can see that um, each of these fritters i'm calling it the oil test it's not very scientific but here we are so you can see that the one that i made a bit like a pancake hardly has any oil residue left on the tissue yeah so the ones that i fried really heavily in oil were a little bit heavy in oil when i had them on the tissues so you could see that there Either way, either of the three ways that you make them, they are really good and they still taste really delicious and adapt it to what suits you. And um, that goes for the recipe too, actually. Most of my recipes are very, very flexible and you can change things to what you have in your kitchen and what's available to you and what's suitable to your dietary requirements. But um, if you do want the recipe for this writer that I made a couple of weeks ago, I'll drop a link here again so you can watch that video and um, enjoy and also thank you so much for tuning in if you stayed up till the end thank you again and uh, have a great week ahead and i look forward to seeing you soon again bye